Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Short Explanations Podcast. My name is Hi. I'm Tom. Is there? There, there. We're and everywhere. We're always everywhere. All on the once. YouTubes, on the YouTubes, and on all your. We're good. We're fine. Podcasts are sold, but we're free. <laughs> and you can steal the podcasts. I mean, I don't know what and it's worth, but if you're unhappy with this podcast for any reason, uh, you can send a self addressed uh, self addressed stamped envelope uh, to the Short Explanations headquarters, uh, and we will issue a refund of the full purchase price of this podcast whenever you so deem fit. That's a guarantee. And, and we do offer free credit monitoring uh, solutions. Yes. We offer no warranty, but it is free. You can put our name down as your credit monitoring solution because it's free. Just in case Experian or somebody else gets hacked and they make you prove it, we do that free. Okay. We are definitely monitoring. Yeah. So... So anyway, so today we want to we want to talk about two things today. Let's first start off with the easy topic. It is Cybersecurity Awareness Month. We have a whole month for it. I don't know what other month today October is. It's spooky season for some people. It's something else for others. But it's Cybersecurity Awareness Month. We get a whole month. And it's a 31-day month. So it must be really important. So again, I, I don't know the backstory behind this, but we'll put some, we'll put a link from CISA in the show notes, uh, a PDF that they put, a just really simple thing. So I figured for the first few minutes, let's just talk about just like really, really simple things. Like not like we would love for everyone to listen to the podcast because that's all we do. We talk about simple things that you should know. However, if, if you're not going to get someone to listen to 30 minutes of us talking, what can you do at home in a group as a family, wherever it is for just what can you do? And I, I think there's a lot of little things you can do. And I'm going to start off with a really easy one. You always want to update your devices. And we're going to talk about that later anyway. I'm going to like now toss it to Tom for another yeah. easy tip. It's, it's just the easiest thing in the world. Like, run the updates. Uh, and I, honestly, this has gotten easier over the years because before you had to go out and grab the updates or run the Windows update utility and like, I'm a pain. But now, you know, occasionally my browser will just yell at me and be like, hey, uh, click this button. We'll save your place in your tabs and your browser will restart and you're done. Uh, so automatic updates are pretty sick. Uh, it, it has honestly made everyone's lives so much easier. Granted, there can be problems with bad updates, but you know, when it comes to security vulnerabilities, make sure stuff gets fixed fast. Automatic updates are pretty rad. I mean, my problem is, is that when you, when, when I close out a browser, I have to re-log into my password manager because mm -hmm. I said it, which is, which is really annoying. And I don't know, I, I sit at a help desk at school and everyone comes to us and what we're learning is that 90% of the time, the person hasn't restarted their computer in weeks. And mm -hmm. so a simple restart will go a long way, but just keep those updates there. They're there. Don't disable them. Some people like to disable the updates. Don't do that. Um, and if somebody, something says we're going to update tonight, just say, okay, just let it do its thing. When you see that update button, nothing. I will say that sometimes you, you have 15 minutes. So you want to hit update and you're like, it should be done in 15 minutes. And then sometimes it's not. So I will give it, there should be some progress bar somewhere that says this will take not size of the update, but this should take 15 minutes. It should take 20 mm -hmm. minutes just to help us out. I think that's, that's the next feature I would like to see. Yeah. The do this later button. I do hit that sometimes on updates. I had an update recently. I had to run for something. Uh, and I was literally in the middle of writing some code, and I was like, yeah, tonight, tonight. And you know, that's fine. Uh, it's, you're probably not going to be hacked between when you hit update later and when the update actually takes effect. Uh, but you know, uh, consider your threat profile. I mean, the next one, so after updates, they have some things, how to talk to people about about this. And their big thing is don't spread, don't fear monger. Don't say you're you're at risk, the, the evil hackers are going to come. Just just update your stuff. Work on, 
work on your privacy, work on just keeping things more secure. Don't leave money in the car. So in our town, um, we, I get on the, on the Facebook posts, somebody stole my car. I thought we lived in a safe town. And then you find out that they left the car key, the car keys in the ignition or the car door open or $500 in the passenger seat. And I think that's a good message. It's yes, you should lock your doors and and you should go after Kia and Hyundai for making it really easy to steal your cars. But I think just deterrence of locking your door or not having valuables in the car goes a much further way than blaming others. A lot of these like, you know, crimes and even like drive by digital hacks, right, are hacks of convenience, right? The door was there, the vulnerable, the vulnerable software was running, uh, there were no locks, there was, you know, an expensive looking iPhone in the cup holder of the unlocked car. Like, I, you know, most of the time you are not being personally targeted. Uh, it's really just about making that target on your back smaller than the people around you. Um, it, it sounds kind of callous, but you don't have to outrun the bear, right? You don't have to outsmart the hackers. You just have to be kind of a more difficult target than everyone else around you. So you don't have to be like the best, most perfect security expert on the planet. You just have to be, you know, slightly harder to hack than the other people. And that goes a long way into keeping you safe from most of the non-targeted hacks around. You, right? um, another, uh, this is less easy, but I would still consider it in the realm of easy things to do. Uh, turn on multi-factor authentication. Two-factor authentication, right? Like, we recommend uh, TOTP, Google Authenticator, security keys if, if your site supports it. Uh, but in the absolute worst case, if all you have is SMS, totally fine. Like, it's any two-factor is better than no two-factor. Uh, so if SMS is what you got, yeah, turn it on. Uh, and even for, like, your less technically inclined family members, friends, whatever, uh, who don't necessarily want to use an app or are going to get confused by that. Like going with just SMS as a default option, like, hey, when you log in, something's going to text you and ask you for a code, just plug it in. That's fine. And you know what? They are safer with SMS multi-factor authentication than they are without it. And it's almost better to turn on SMS everywhere where you can. So, you, so when you log into a website, you expect it. I mm -hmm. think that's the better, the better part of that. So if all you can do is SMS and you hear us talk about SMS is broken and this and that, and you shouldn't do it, but it still works. It works like 97% of the time. Yeah. It's that very small percentage where it doesn't work. But again, your threat model, you're not that person. I mean, you, you could be, but you're most likely not that person. It's to just keep from scammers from getting into your, your PayPal account that you have a couple hundred dollars. Now, again, if your threat model is that you're keeping millions of dollars in Bitcoin, we have a different issue that's not here. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you need way more qualified security personnel than two random people on a podcast. Yeah, um, so it's, it's more of, but those are the... You, the, the problem with multi-factor authentication is it's really annoying. Nobody mm -hmm. wants multi-factor authentication. Nobody wants long, unique passwords and all that. But to but to normalize the, at least the SMS or something like that. I was going to say, my, my car insurance company calls me. So it's like, Ooh. would you like us? They're like, would you like to send you a message to your phone? I'm like, yes, because that's the only thing they have. Or an email. And the phone, they call you. And not only do they call you, they're like, please write it down. You're like, okay, I, I can memorize six numbers. And it's eight numbers. And then they make you send it back to them. I'm like, come on. Yeah. I mean, it works if you're right there. But it's just, see, that's not helpful. It, if you're setting up your system, remember, people who don't know what you're doing, just please help them out. Like, that, that's, that's the point. Yeah, it's it's the constant tug of war between security and convenience. And, I, you know, maximum convenience is no security and maximum security is definitely not convenient. Uh, so finding that middle ground of what people will tolerate and what keeps people safe is always going to be a fight. It's and then I, what worth having. I was going to say probably one of our last topics is not to understand phishing, but just talk to people about scams. 
uh, I mean, we don't know what the latest scam is, but just be aware that scam usually after natural disasters, insurance companies, this that they're just harping on some lack of time. You're you're driving or something just happened, and we noticed fraud on your credit card. Tell us now, and those are the things that pull at you. But just keep your ground. Just talk. To, just remember that people are scamming you. And yes, it looks like the credit card company is this, but trust no one and 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 try to do better or explain to people that these scams are not the Nigerian Prince scam anymore. If it seems too good to be true, it probably is. And if you get a random message that's trying to instill a sense of urgency into you, and said a different way, if you're if you get a message that's trying to get you to do something really fast, um, that's a pretty, pretty big red flag that what you're dealing with is a scam, right? Not all the time. I don't want to say that every urgent message is a scam because not every urgent message is. But if you get that thing of, oh, you're going to your account's going to be deleted or we've locked your social security number or there's fraud on your credit card and you're going to be on the hook for paying this bill unless you call us immediately with the last four of your credit card number. Yeah. I, no. No, no. If they're trying to get you to do something fast, it smells a little weird. It's kind of a red flag. And you should you should start putting the shields up, right? You know, could it be legit? Maybe, but just keep an eye out, you know? Keep your wits about you. It's a very rarely are things so urgent like that that you have to do something immediately. Um, especially finance companies, banks, credit cards. They're slow, dude. They they do not <laughs> they do not require that amount of urgency. I was gonna say, when you buy a new iPhone, you tend to get a lot of iCloud spam to try and get you to buy more iCloud or do- stuff that doesn't exist. But it's scary how they figure that out. There must be some signal that we're sending that they're getting to that they're buying to do this against us, which is, which is really strange, but usually after a major purchase or something, you get, you you start getting the UPS spam. I get a lot of your Amazon, your Amazon delivery is going here unless you call us because again, they're hoping that you actually use Amazon or they have information on that. It's just a scam. And, and if you fall for a scam, it's not your fault. Yeah. A lot of people get really upset and they take it seriously and they get depressed. It's not your fault. The scams, the the old ideas of look for, uh, what's it called? Bad bogus emails or bad grammar with chat GPT now and writing AIs, these scam letters are going to look legitimate. So it's up to you to look at them and, and try to figure out and always err on the side of caution, get somebody's phone number and you call them back or you find the number and call them back. That's usually the best way to handle that. If, uh, especially in terms of like credit card, debit card, stuff like that, if you need, if you get one of these things and you're concerned that it's legitimate, like you got a legitimate fraud call from your credit card company, like if, if you're worried about it, just hang up the call if you're on the phone or ignore the text message, physically grab your credit card, look on the back, call that number, right? Um, because I've I've literally gotten calls from banks before and I've said, hey, look, I can't give you any information here. I just got a phone call from a random number. I'm going to hang up now and I will call the number on the back of my card. Thank you. It, especially if they start to protest, it could be a scammer. Um, the The person who ended up calling me was legitimately from a bank. They were concerned about a fraud thing that they saw. It was fine. Um, but they said, oh, absolutely. We completely understand. I hope to talk to you in a bit. Thank you very much. And they hung up the call. And, you know, that told me I still hung up the call and called the number on the back of the card. But that told me all I needed to know. They were legitimate. They weren't trying to keep me on the line for a scam call. Um, so, you know, you you do have ways out of these situations. If you start to feel a little weird, feel free to just end the call, bounce, delay, hang up, whatever you got to do to get yourself out of that situation. It's fine. We, whatever it is can be fixed later with time with a little bit of thought. Nothing, again, nothing happens with that urgency. That's the... Yeah. Um, 
And other than that, they have other messaging to help you with. They want you to, ha- a lot of this is really cheesy. We were looking through this beforehand and it's like, have a family meeting. And I'm thinking to myself, how am I going to have a family meeting with my 10 year old and be like, son, you should use multi-factor authentication or a password manager. <laughs> like, I'm sure we can, uh, look, we do, I do this for a living, but it's just one of those, I think more really designed, like, like don't talk to strangers or don't give you, my younger son says, tells everyone we have a code to get into the back of our house. It is. And then proceeds to tell people the code. <laughs> things like, no, we don't, we don't talk about things that try to keep us safe. Uh, we want you to have this. We don't talk about this and we don't talk about that. And hopefully that sinks in. And I think there's constant communication, that idea with drugs, you may not be the best telling your kids not to do drugs, but if you constantly tell them that drugs are bad, at some point they'll listen. I think if you constantly harp on this and say, hey, turn on multi-factor or update, somebody will listen to you. And you just need a few of those somebodies because they'll tell somebody and that's somebody and everything else. So I have a friend who refuses to move to a password manager, refuses to have really most good password security on their accounts. But I did harp them into uh, harping them enough to get them to do two factor on all their stuff. And you know, it has protected them. They have gotten the scary notifications of, ah, oh, somebody's trying to reset your password. And, you know, they get a bunch of email codes or uh, codes in their email from the, the website that they use. And uh, yeah, it, it does work. So you might you might not win every battle, but as long as you can win a couple of them, you can move that needle a little bit and actually protect people. Kind of cool to see. And what I will say is that I, I moving to our next topic, the, the idea that that both that all that both Chrome, Firefox, all the browsers, iOS, Android OS, um, Windows 11 and OS 10 and even Linux have the automatic updates. They are doing their best to protect you. And there's very little on your end that you have to do, but those little things like we just mentioned are the big things, updating and having strong passwords and everything else. So the consumer devices are learning this and are working working together. With that said, Tom's going to tell us about WebP. So, uh, the WebP vulnerability. Uh, this started as just an Apple vulnerability um, you know, with, with iOS and with Safari um, and uh, WebKit in general. Um, and then, you know, was kind of looked at and moved to, uh, you know, Chrome had some impact and Google uh, listed this as just impacting Chrome. You know, don't worry about it. We've already pushed an update. It's fine. Um, but the, the issue was that this thing was kind of misclassified and mishandled from the very beginning, uh, it, which happens, right? We, we don't want to throw a bunch of shade at security researchers. It's a hard job and, you know, <laughs> they're, they're busy enough as it is without us harping on it. Um, but there is a uh, WebP vulnerability that's out in the wild. It has seen exploitation. Um, what WebP is, is it's an image library. It's an image format. It's like JPEG or PNG or GIF, right? It's it's just a way to say this data, you display it like this with the pixels and you get a you get a pretty picture. Um, and that's what WebP does. The, the vulnerability is uh, there's actually, we're not going to get like super technical into it, but basically with a specifically crafted image, um, you can execute code. You can do a buffer overflow and actually execute code using that picture. In layman's terms, it basically means if you load up the wrong website and you have this vulnerable, vulnerable, pardon me, if you load up a website with this specifically crafted image or a specifically crafted image and you have a vulnerable version of WebP and your computer tries to display that picture, it can run code. Uh, from a hacker and actually do things to your system locally just by trying to render a picture. It's a pretty serious vulnerability. Now, luckily, the patches are out there. All you have to do is update your devices and you're fine. Um, Most programs today are already updated. um, But, you know, for a while there, it was kind of sketchy because this was like viewed as a pretty 
slowly defined vulnerability as far as what it targets and what it affects. And then it was realized, oh no, this actually affects uh, basically everything. So everything from Microsoft Teams to Chrome to Safari to iOS to Watch OS, because uh, Watch OS also got some updates, um, to a bunch of stuff in between. We're talking on Discord right now. Uh, Discord was affected. They had vulnerable WebP. Um, so if you see a bunch of updates from all of your apps at once saying, please update, go ahead and run that. This is a pretty serious one. Uh, and it has seen exploits in the wild. Depending on where you go, what you browse, you know, you might not ever encounter one of these vulnerable images, but operate on the safe side, run your updates. Every time Apple issues an update because I'm fully ingrained, I have to update everything. That's the phone, the iPad, the watch, the 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 desktop, and it's like the TVs. Yeah, I don't I don't have the TVs yet, but that's the, but you're there and you're like this takes forever. And yes, Apple makes it really nice to update at night, but like I said before, it's hey, I have half hour now. Let's just update. Like I'm just sitting here, I'm crushing candies. I got to make dinner half an hour let's do it it just takes forever and i'm like why why and i understand i actually do understand the why but it does take forever and i wish they do more of those incremental updates so they're not downloading these huge binary files onto your computer but it's annoying but again the alternative is to not be safe and you're like well yeah. is it targeting me not really but it's it's one of those things that yes you can get caught up in the in the in the whatever and so it, it does become an issue and we just found yeah. out that that the pegasus software was actually targeting journalists so pegasus is a really bad spyware uh written and they're actually going after dissidents and everything else but web journalists and and normal people have been caught up with it and they're leveraging these zero days and this obviously was one of them until it was patched to to install themselves and collect data I, we have like these, you know, please update your devices episodes a lot. Yeah. Um, this one is pretty important to do. I know we we always are saying update your stuff because it's just generally good advice. This one is important because you can get caught by in like drive by remote code execution, right? Like somebody crafts a specifically, you know, malicious WebP image and, you know, it hits the top of Reddit or Twitter or whatever, right? Uh, and they don't have to necessarily specifically target anyone uh, with this malicious image that would execute code on your system. Just whoever happens to view it. You put it in a popular place, your browsers load it, and oh no, you're owned. Um, so running your updates just to get rid of that kind of, you know, I, I don't want to call it an, an eventuality, but getting rid of that kind of risk, uh, it's probably a good idea to run those updates sooner rather than and to say, well, what I wish we can do is disable interpreters on our system. You know what? I don't want any WebP content. Again, unfortunately, it'll be a lot of stuff. I don't want PDFs. I don't want, I don't yeah, want JPEGs. I don't, yeah. I don't want... Where do you draw the line, right? So I, I don't want JPEGs or PNGs or GIFs or text. or And like eventually we get down to the, well, um... You're running a terminal-based operating system where you're manually typing commands and curling web pages that can't execute code. Uh, at that point, you're running are you really using <laughs> yeah, you're running a you're modern running. computer. And I, for the record, for for the podcast, I love BSD, but yeah, you're right. You're basically running a terminal operating system uh, without um, anything. I realize I'm a window manager. It's on BSD. Don't yell at. Look, there there are there are uh, hardened security models for all these devices. Um, Apple, Android, they have that, which doesn't allow these inline previews and things like that. But again, we go back to the security versus convenience. Um, if each company wants to own their own image format, like HEIC is Apple's, and we said WebP was Google's, and they they think that their that their non JPEGs is better for whatever reason, but 
So all these all these things want to accept it because you're going to go to a site and you're not going to see images because you don't have this installed. You're just going to click away. Or if somebody sends you a cat picture on your on whatever your messaging platform of choice and you can't see it, you're going to go away. So it's in their best interest to include it. But that's the problem. As you open the floodgates, everything that gets rendered may potentially have a bug and may hurt you. And it's nothing. It's no fault of yourself. It's just that interpreting. And displaying pictures is a very hard process. It is. And that's that's why you always see a ton of vulnerabilities coming out of specifically media interpreters, media formats, because it's it's a bunch of data doing really complex stuff and uh, honestly a lot of really cool tricks to take something that should be really expensive and really hard and really just giant file sizes to make this stuff work. Uh, and doing some really clever tricks to get it as small as possible while maintaining the maximum amount of like image or video or audio quality. It's it's really cool computer science stuff. But with that comes some risk. You are interpreting and displaying data. And if you get any part of that process wrong along the chain, it's a security vulnerability. And it's unfortunate, uh, but it's also, you know, just kind of the modern reality of computing so update your devices and be ready to update them again and again and again and again just keep them updated yep. turn on the automatic updates and with that said hey with that said actually i do want to tease a future episode because i think we're done but we were talking we heard tracy or infosec sherpa talk about things that women did at that do at conferences or out and about that um, that us men don't understand. And I was thinking to myself, what else do us men not understand? So that we're looking sense. for someone to explain to us what us men don't understand. So I'm teasing that. We'll see. I don't know. Hopefully that's going to come soon. I have somebody in mind. We're just trying to figure out a time. Hopefully, because we're on a big privacy kick. So... We're trying to find more privacy related topics for us. And so if you have anything, join our signal group. It's free. We don't know who's in there because we're private and we have a lot of fun. It's not that bad. Just email us, find us, tweet us, toot us, whatever you want to do. We're there and let us know. And with that said, I think we will see you next week.